Chapter 8. There what? There was the staccato clank of a set of tools landing on the deck. Hang on, I'm on my way. Leia looked up at the ships pacing them. Tie interceptors, all right. In excellent condition, too, from what you could see of them. And she wondered where they could have come from. Surely the Imperials weren't launching an all-out attack on the Patrick system. With a sector conference over and the delegates on their way back to their home systems, there was nothing here they could possibly want. Unless, of course, they were the backups for the first three fighters. In which case, they were here to make sure the job was finished. With the screech of boots on hull plates, Han skidded to a halt beside her. What are they doing? he panted, peering up at them. Leia frowned. Nothing, she said, realizing belatedly just how odd their lack of activity was. To just sit out there and watch them crash seemed overly sadistic, even for Imperials. At least for line soldiers, she'd known some moths and grand moths who would have reveled in something like this. They're maneuvering, Han said, suddenly, pointing. That one on the left. See? He's drifting out a little. I see, Leia said. But what's the maneuvering for? An instant later, she got her answer. In perfect unison, a bright yellow disc connected by a yellow cable shot out from the underside of each of the four ties, slamming solidly onto positions on the Falcon's upper hull. The cables went taut, and with a jerk that nearly knocked Han off his feet, the ship's descent abruptly slowed. Leia looked up at Han, saw her own bewilderment mirrored in his face. I'll be set on by a hut, he murmured. Grappling mags. He sank into the pilot's chair looked over at her. I give up. What's going on? Leia shook her head. I don't know, she said slowly, stretching out with the force. But there's something about these pilots, Han. Like what? I can't tell yet, Leia said again. It's something very strange. You're telling me? He nodded towards the viewport. Well, whatever it is, we ought to find out about it pretty soon. Looks like we're already coming down. He was right. They had passed over a line of low hills, and the ties had now dropped to barely treetop height. Rolling along beneath them were vast fields of tall grain, the neat rows rippling with the wind of their passage. They passed an access path, more fields, another path, still more fields. At the far side of this set were another collection of hills taller than the group they'd passed a few kilometers back. And at the base of the tallest of the hills, little more than a dark spot in the hazy afternoon sunlight, was a cave. Yeah, that's where we're going, all right, Han said. Nice and private, unless whoever owns these fields happens to be out working them. Got a reception committee already waiting to, I see. Leia nodded, squinting against the sunlight at the figures standing outside the cave. I count. Looks like ten of them. Plus the four TIE pilots, plus whoever else is hanging around inside, Han agreed, reaching under his control board and retrieving his blaster and holster from the storage niche there. You have a plan? Leia asked, eyeing the blaster. Not really, Han said as he buckled on the holster. I'm not going to charge out shouting if that's what you're worried about. If they wanted us dead, they would have just let us crash. Maybe they think the children are with us, Leia said, a shiver of unpleasant memories running through her. After all the times her children had been kidnapped or threatened. If they do, they're going to be real disappointed, Han said, his tone deadly. Deliberately, he checked his blaster and shoved it back in the holster. And in a lot of trouble, too. He nodded towards her waist. Almost time for the party, Han. Shouldn't you be getting dressed, too? Right, Leia said, pulling her lightsaber out of her board storage compartment and hooking it to her belt. Calming her thoughts, she reached out to the Force for strength and wisdom. I'm ready. A minute later, they reached the hills, and directly in front of the cave, as Han had predicted, the tie slipped into full repulsor lift mode and eased the Falcon smoothly to the ground. They released the grappling mags and reeled them back in and with practiced ease lined up began, uh, and began maneuvering one by one into the cave. At least that explains how they showed up from nowhere, Han commented as he shut down what was left of the Falcon systems. 
Three will get you the hand pot. This is one of Grand Admiral Thrawn's sleeper cells. I always thought those were just a myth, Leia said, gazing into the darkness of the cave. Disinformation the Empire came up with after Thrawn... Well, after we thought he was dead. I'm still not convinced he isn't, Han growled, standing up and stepping back towards the door. No point in putting this off. Let's go see what they want. <clears throat> One of the reception committee was waiting at the bottom of the ramp as Han unsealed the hatchway. He was a tall man, roughly Han's height and strongly built, with dark eyes and a thick shock of long black hair. Hello, he said, nodding as they started down the ramp. His voice was genial enough, but there was a definite tension in his face and stance. Either of you hurt? Counselor, you're bleeding. Just a scratch, Leia assured him rubbing at the dried blood. That odd sense she'd felt with the TIE pilots was back again, stronger than ever. It's already mostly healed. The man nodded back, some of his black hair dropping across his eyes with the movement. Yes, of course. Jedi healing techniques. Where's the rest of your group, Han asked, glancing around as they reached the bottom of the ramp. <clears throat> Checking out your ship, the man replied, pointing behind them. Leia turned. The others they'd seen waiting were walking around under the Falcon, looking and poking as they assessed the damage. That second Corlier did a number on you, didn't it? The first man continued. You're lucky. If he'd rammed you a little higher up, he'd have taken out your power core and probably breached your hull along with it. So those were Corlier flash ships, huh? Han said, his tone that of one professional exchanging shop talk with another. I've heard of them but never seen one before. They're not very common, the man agreed, but since the Corlier Combine doesn't put serial numbers on any of their models, they're a favorite of people who don't want their identities traced. Sort of just the opposite of TIE Interceptors, Han said pointedly, nodding back towards the cave opening. The man gave him a bittersweet smile. Something like that, he said. My name's Sabman Devist, by the way. Welcome to Imperial Sleeper Cell, Genth 44. Nice to be here, Han said, with only a hint of sarcasm. So what happens now? We talk, a voice came from their right. Leia turned. Coming around the side of the Falcon was a man dressed in a TIE pilot's flight suit. About Sadman's height and build, she noticed, with a shorter version of his same black hair and a well-trimmed beard. My name's Carib Devist, Counselor Organa Solo, he said as he crossed toward Sadman. I'm sort of the spokesman for this group. You're Sadman's brother? Leia asked. The family resemblance was obvious. Carib smiled faintly. That's what we tell people, he said. Actually, he stepped to Sadman's side. Seeing as you're a Jedi, I don't suppose it'll take you long. Leia frowned, wondering what he was getting at. The two of them just stood there, watching her, Sadman's hair rustling in the breeze. And then abruptly it hit her. Sadman. Carib. She twisted her head. Behind them, the men who'd been examining the Falcon had come out from under the ship and were standing silently in a row, also watching. Different clothing, different hairstyles, some with beards or mustaches, here and there a scar. But otherwise identical. Completely identical. Han? Yeah, he said, and as she focused on his thoughts, she knew that he'd caught on, too. Brothers, huh? Carib shrugged uncomfortably. It sounds better, he said quietly, than clones. For a long minute, the only sound was the soft hiss of the breeze rustling through the tall green stalks. Ah, Han said at last, his voice studiously casual. That's nice. So, what's it like being a clone? Carib smiled bitterly. The exact same smile Leia noted with a private shudder that Sadman had shown a minute earlier. About as you'd expect, he said. It's the sort of secret that gets heavier with time and age. Yeah, Han said. I can imagine. Carib's face hardened. Excuse me, Solo, but you can't possibly imagine it. 
Every time one of us leaves this valley, it's with the knowledge that every outside contact puts our lives and those of our families at risk. The knowledge that all it will take will be one person suddenly looking at us with new eyes, and the whole carefully created soap bubble of the ever-so-close Devist family will collapse into the fire of hatred and rage and murder. I think you're overstating your case a little, Leia suggested. We're a long way past the devastation of the Clone Wars. The old prejudices aren't nearly so strong anymore. You think not, Counselor? Carob countered. You're a sophisticated woman a politician and diplomat, fully accustomed to dealing with the whole spectrum of sentient beings. And you're good at it. Yet you, too, are feeling uncomfortable in our presence. Admit it. Lay aside. Perhaps a little, she conceded. But I don't know you as well as your friends and neighbors do. Carob shook his head. We have no friends, he said. And if we're a long way past the Clone Wars, we're not nearly so far past Grand Admiral Thrawn's use of soldiers like us in his bid for power. Is that how you're working for now? Leia asked, studying Carib's face. There was something disturbingly familiar about him. The orders have come in over Thrawn's name, Carib said cautiously. But of course you can put any name on any order. Beside her, Leia felt Han's sense suddenly change. I got it, he said, with a soft snap of his fingers. Baron fell, right? Baron Sunter fell? Leia asked, her stomach tightening with a sudden realization. Yes, that was who Carib reminded her of. A young Sunter fell. Once the Empire's top TIE pilot fell had married Wedge Antilles' sister and then been forced to strike a reluctant deal with Rogue Squadron to save his wife after Imperial Intelligence Director Yisan Isard set out to kill her. The rescue had succeeded, but an impeccably laid trap had subsequently snared Fell himself back into Isard's hands. At that point he disappeared, presumably to a brief trial and a quick execution. Except that all that had happened only a few months after Endor, years before Thrawn had returned from the Unknown Regions and begun his cloning operations. Which left the question... Han got there first. So how come Fell lived long enough for Thrawn to get the cloning tanks up and running, he asked. Carib shook his head, a brief flicker of pain crossing his face. We don't know, he said in a low voice. Our flash learning didn't include any of Fell's personal history. We assume... He hesitated. We can only assume that whatever sympathies he might have had towards the New Republic were burned out of him by Isard. Or by Thrawn? Han asked. Or by Thrawn, Carib agreed heavily. Otherwise, I doubt Fell would have been thought reliable enough to have clones taken from him, no matter how good a pilot he was. There was another moment of silence. Leia stretched out with the Force, but if Carib was disturbed by the discussion of wrecked minds, it was masked by the odd clone sense surrounding all of them. Yet you saved our lives just now, she reminded him. Don't give them too much credit on that one, Han growled. If they'd left us alone, we'd have hit dead center in this valley of theirs. You think their secret would have stood up to all the investigators who'd have swarmed over this place? Yet our secret is now out anyway, Carib reminded him calmly. Depending on what you decide to do. Maybe, Han said, his hand dropping casually to hover, hover beside his blaster. Or maybe depending on what you plan to do. Carib shook his head. You misunderstand. We have no intention of harming you, nor do we wish to fight for Grand Admiral Thrawn and the Empire. Han's forehead wrinkled. So, what? You're surrendering? Not exactly. Carib seemed to brace himself. What we want, all that we want, is your word that we'll be left alone here. Han and Leia exchanged glances. You want what? Leia asked. What? Is that too high a price to pay for saving your lives? Sadman demanded. Considering what you owe us. Wait a minute, Han said, holding up a hand. Let me get this straight. You were created by Thrawn? A muscle in Carib's cheek twitched, but he nodded. Correct. This is Grand Admiral Thrawn we're talking about, right? Han persisted. 
the guy who wants to bring the Empire back. The guy who picked the best and most loyal TIE pilots, ADAT drivers, and whatever to run through his clone tanks? Carib shook his head again. You still don't understand. Certainly Baron Fell was loyal to the Empire, or at least what the Empire was before insane butchers like Isard took over. In his era, the Empire stood for stability and order. Which you and the New Republic could use a little more of at the moment, Sabin put in pointedly. Let's leave the politics out of this, Leia put in quickly, before Han could come up with a good retort. I'm still confused. If Baron Fell was loyal to the Empire, and if you see the need to re-establish that kind of order... And if Thrawn's really back, Han muttered. And if Thrawn's really back, Leia agreed, then why would you want to sit this one out? Carib smiled sadly. Because for once, the great Grand Admiral Thrawn miscalculated, he said. There was one thing Fell cherished more than personal glory or even galactic stability. He waved a hand around him, the gesture taking in the field surrounding them. He loved the soil, he said quietly. And so do we. And finally, Leia understood. <clears throat> she looked at Han. He's kidding, right? Her husband asked, his expression and thoughts clearly not believing any of it. I mean, Look, Luke couldn't wait to get off that farm on Tatooine. Luke was on a moisture farm in the middle of a desert, Leia reminded him, letting her gaze sweep slowly across the neat rows of tall grain, her own memories of the rich vegetation of Alderaan tugging at her. It was nothing like this. You feel it too, don't you, Carib said softly. Then you understand. He looked around the fields. This is our life now, Counselor. Our land and our families are what matter to us. Politics, war, even flying. That's all in the past. He brought his gaze back. Do you believe us? I'd like to, Leia said. How far are you willing to go to prove it? Carib braced himself. As far as necessary. Leia nodded then stepped up to him sensing Han's flicker of uneasiness as she left his side, and locked eyes with the young clone. Calming her mind, she stretched out to his mind with the Force. He stood impassively, allowing the probe without flinching. And by the time she stepped back again, she had no more doubts. He means it, Han, she confirmed. They all do. So that's it, huh? Han said. We're just going to head off and leave them here? We'll repair your ship first, of course, Carib said. The MX droids that handle maintenance on our fighters can probably have it running in a day or two. To Leia's surprise, Han shook his head. Not good enough, he said firmly. You're going to ask us to protect an Imperial sabotage group. That's a pretty big risk for us, you know. The group off to the side stirred. What are you trying? Someone began. Carib silenced him with a gesture a slight smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. You always were an operator, Solo, he said dryly. What do you want? You don't want to fight anymore, Han said. That's fine. Neither do we. But if we don't get this Kamas thing resolved fast, none of us are going to have any choice in the matter. Your point? Carib asked. We need to find out which Bothans were involved in the hit on Kamas, Han said and there's only one place we know we can get those names from. Carib's lips compressed briefly. The Empire. Specifically, the Central Imperial Records Library on Bastion, Leia said, seeing now where Han was going with this. The problem is that we don't know where Bastion is. We don't either, Sadman said. Our orders come from the Ubiquitrate through a special channel. We've never been directly in touch with Bastion or the current Imperial leadership. Sure, but there must be some way you can get an emergency message to them, Han said. Imperial ops procedures can't have slipped that badly. Carib and Sadman exchanged glances. There is a place at the edge of Imperial space where we can go, Carib said doubtfully. But it's not supposed to be used unless there's vital information that can't wait for proper channels. I think we can come up with something that qualifies, Han said. If we can, will you take me out there? Wait a minute, Leia cut in. 
Don't you mean take us out there? Sorry, Han, Han said, shaking his head. But if there's one person everyone in the Empire knows by sight, it's you. Oh, really, Leia countered. You think you're any better? I wasn't ever president of the New Republic, Han pointed out. Besides, one of us has to go. Why, Leia demanded, a dull ache around her heart. Han had done a lot of crazy things in his life, but walking into the heart of the Empire was beyond even his old smuggler's rashness. The New Republic has other people they could send. Yeah, but which ones can we trust, Han asked. Besides, we don't have time to go back and hunt up a team. The whole New Republic's balanced on a blade's edge right now. But you can't go alone, Leia insisted. And don't forget I'm a Jedi. Any trouble you get into... We've got company, one of the clones announced suddenly, pointing. Leia looked. Just clearing the distant hills, a low-flying craft was burning through the air towards them. Carib, you'd better get the others into the cave, she told him, running through her Jedi sensory enhancement techniques and squinting at the approaching vehicle. Better yet, you'd better all go. That looks like our Nagri guards. Uh, Kra's shuttle. Too late, Carib said, his eyes on the approaching vehicle as he gestured to the others to stay where they were. If there are Nagri in there, they already have us under surveillance. Trying to slip out of sight now will just make things worse. The shuttle was almost to them, skimming low over the tall grain and showing no sign of stopping. Han made an unintelligible noise in the back of his throat, and even Leia felt a twinge of uncertainty. It looked like a cross shuttle, but at the speed it was making, that was impossible to confirm. If it was instead a follow-up attack. And then, at almost the last second, the craft braked hard, coming to a mid-air halt. A short gray figure dropped out of the passenger side door, and the shuttle shot off again, swinging high over the cave and hills before circling back towards the group gathered around the Falcon. Counselor! Barkim said gravely, recovering his balance quickly after his three-meter drop and marching towards them. He had no visible weapons, but with a augury, that didn't mean a lot. The Patrick defense monitor said that a ship had come under attack and surmised it was yours. We are pleased to find you uninjured. Thank you, Barkim, Kalea said, keeping her voice as gravely unemotional as his. What he really wanted to do, she knew, was to express his deep shame and self-loathing that he and Sakishak had been out there to help protect them from the attack. But he would never reveal even a hint of such feelings in front of strangers. We appreciate your concern, she added. And as you see, we were able to land safely among friends. Yes, the Nogri said, his eyes measuring the group with a single well-trained glance. I presume you will now be... His voice faltered just slightly. Returning with us. An almost undetectable slip, but for Leia it was enough. No, it's all right, she said quickly, taking a step towards Carib. They're not going to hurt us. You do not understand, Barkim snarled. There was contempt suddenly in his voice, and a blaster just as suddenly in his hand. They are Imperial clones. They're clones, yes, Leia said. But they're on our side now. Barkim spat. They are Imperials. So were the Nagri once, Carib said quietly. Barkim's blaster twitched towards him, his large black eyes flashing. Any mention of their long servitude to the Empire by outsiders was considered a deadly insult. No, Leia said firmly reaching out with the force to turn the blaster muzzle aside. They saved our lives, and they've asked for sanctuary. You may trust them as you choose, Counselor, Barkim said darkly. But I do not. But nevertheless, the blaster disappeared. <clears throat> there was an urgent transmission from Coruscant for you shortly after you departed Patrick Major, the Nogri said waving a stand-down signal towards his partner in the circling shuttle. Did you receive it? No, Leia said, frowning. She hadn't realized the Nogri were able to tap into their private communications. It probably came in while we were being jammed. Did you get a copy? Sakishak will bring it, Barkim said, nodding his head fractionally towards the shuttle now landing off to the side. 
We, of course, did not attempt to decrypt it. Which didn't necessarily mean that they couldn't do so, do so if they'd wanted to. Have him bring it into the Falcon, please, she instructed. I'll go get the decrypt ready. You wait here with Han and help Carib and the others get repairs organized. Ten minutes later, seated at the Falcon's game table as, as Sakishak stood watchful guard between her and the hatchway, she slid the data card into her data pad. The message was short, and very much to the point. Leia, this is General Bella Bliss. I've just received some vital information and urgently need to talk to you. Please stay on Patrick Minor. I'll be arriving there in three days and will meet at you at the North Barris spaceport. Please treat this communication with the utmost security. Leia frowned, the skin on the back of her neck tingling. What in the worlds could Bella Bliss have found that he would need to come all the way out here? And why her, of all people? There was the clank of boots on metal, and she looked up to see Han stride in past Sakishak. Looks pretty straightforward, I guess, he reported, sliding into the seat beside her. The head droid thinks they can have her back together in a couple of days. So what's this big important message? Wordlessly, Leia handed over the data pad. Han read it, his forehead wrinkling as he did so. This is interesting, he declared, setting down the data pad. How did Bella Bliss know we were here? Gaversom must have told him, Leia said. He's the only one who knew we were coming to Packwick Minor after the conference was over. Yeah, well, those three Corlears knew it too, Han said pointedly, swiveling the data pad around to look at the message again. How sure are you that this is really from Bella Bliss? About as sure as it's possible to be, Leia said. It has his signature code, plus the bridge break confirmation. That's what? That crypt-embedded code trick Ghent came up with a couple of months ago? That's the one, Leia said. I don't think the Imperials even know the codes are in there, let alone have a way to access or duplicate them. Unless Ghent was using the same trick back when he was still working for Card, Han mused, rubbing his chin. Could be the Imperials picked up on it then. No, Bella Bliss asked him about that when he first proposed the technique, Leia said. Ghent said it was something he'd just developed. Hmm. Han read the message again. No idea what this is about? None, Leia said. I guess we'll find out in a couple of days. Well, you'll find out anyway, Han said. Carib and I will be long gone by then. Leia took a deep breath, the ache returning abruptly to her chest. Han! No argument, Han, Han said quietly, reaching over to take her hand. I don't like it either, but if we don't get this stopped, everything's going to go up in smoke. You know that better than I do. We don't know that, Leia argued. We've got the New Republic government and Luke's Jedi students to help hold things together. If it comes to civil war, we can force the Bothans to pay whatever reparations are necessary, even if it winds up wrecking their economy. You really think the Diamala will let Gaversom force them into that kind of self-destruction, Han countered? Not to mention the Mon Cals, the Sifkrees, and whoever else has lined up on the Bothan side since yesterday? Come on. We didn't win the war with wishful thinking. Well, then what about Card? Leia asked, trying one last time. What about him? Han asked. Just because he's gone out looking for a copy of the Kamas document doesn't mean he's going to find it. Matter of fact, he didn't seem too confident about it himself. If he had, he would have asked for half the payment up front. Leia glared at him. I'm being serious. So am I, Han said, squeezing her hand. You think I want to go walking into the middle of the Empire? Look, you can talk all you want about holding things together. But if the New Republic blows, you and Gaversom and all the Jedi in Luke's school aren't going to be able to put it back together. And if that happens, what kind of life are Jason and Jaina and Anakin going to have? Or Chewie's cubs? Or Kraken's grandkids? Or anyone else? I don't like it any better than you do, but it's got to be done. Leia took a deep breath, stretching out to the Force. No, she didn't like it at all. But at the same time, paradoxically, it somehow felt right. Not pleasant, certainly not safe, but right. You aren't going alone, are you? she sighed. I mean, someone besides Carib? Yeah, I've got someone in mind, Han said, 
his voice an odd mixture of relief and regret. Relief, she suspected, because his Jedi wife wasn't going to insist he not go. Regret for exactly the same reason. Leia managed to smile. Lando? How'd you guess? Han said, managing an answering smile. Yeah, him and a couple others. He half turned to look at Sakashak. Not you, in case you were going to ask. I would advise you to reconsider, Sakashak said. A Nogri guard disguised as your slaves could be unobtrusive even on an, imp on an Imperial world. His eyes flicked to Leia. We have already failed you twice, Lady Vader. First on Bathawui, and now here. We could not endure the shame and disgrace of a third such failure. Disgrace isn't going to matter much if you get us picked up ten steps off the ramp, Han pointed out. Sorry, but Lando and me can do this ourselves. You just keep an eye on Leia, all right? Do not fear, Sakashak said, a dark menace in his voice. We will. Under the table, Leia caught Han's hand. So much for our little vacation, she said forcing a smile that probably looked as unconvincing as it felt. The look that flickered across Han's face made her wish she hadn't said that. I'm sorry, Leia, he said, in a low voice. We never seem to get a break from all this, do we? Not very often, she agreed with a sigh. If I'd realized at the beginning how much all of this was going to cost. I don't know. I do, Han said. You'd have died on Alderaan. Palpatine would still be running the Empire, and I'd be still shipping spice for slime tails like Jabba. All that by itself makes it worth it. You're right, Leia said, feeling slightly ashamed of her moment of self-pity. When were you and Carib planning to leave? Well, let's see, Han said, consideringly, an unexpected glint of roguishness touching the somber tone of his emotions. I've got to get a transmission across to Lando, and Carib's got to roll their freighter out and run a check on it. And he's a family man, too, so he's going to need time to say goodbye to his wife and kids. So let's say... Tomorrow morning? Translation. He'd told Carib they weren't leaving till morning, with whatever excuses he'd needed to make it stick. Thank you, she said quietly, squeezing his hand and trying to smile again. It felt much better this time. It's not what I was looking for, Han said, but I guess it's better than nothing. Much better, she assured him. But do you think all of these crises can wait an extra night? I don't know, Han said, sliding out of his seat and offering her his arm in one of those old royal Alderanian gestures he too rarely used. But I guess they'll have to. And that's the end of the chapter. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon.